This is a video about running with asthma and the different medications that I have personally tried to use. No company has paid me for anything you will see in this video, and I'm not endorsing any company either. Thank you so much for listening. Hi, it's Vanessa, and this video is all about my trip with asthma. I have asthma. I've had asthma since I was a young child, and I run pretty highly competitively with asthma, and I actually have dealt with a lot of different kinds of uh, medications and insurance companies, and this video is all going to be about my story and running with asthma. Now, the first thing I'm going to tell you is I'm not a doctor, so I may get a few things wrong. But I do a lot of research, and this is all my personal experience with asthma drugs. So the first drug you may be familiar with are these rescue inhalers. And these open up your airways, and they work really quickly. It's an aerosol. You take a puff. You hold it in your lungs as long as you can and let it out. And it opens up the airways. That's what gets you some immediate relief. They do not work long-term, though. So albuterol is the number one of these that we use. Um, it's just, just a couple of different ones. It's an older type. This is a newer type. And most people that have asthma will carry these on a regular basis or COPD. The next one you would be familiar with is a corticosteroid. So these are long-term acting. They keep everything open. They're very commonly used. This one is called Wixella. It's been prescribed for decades for me. Doesn't work fantastic. I'll be honest with you. But the reason I took it was my insurances, whether it be Blue Cross or Cigna, which I'll get into a lot about Cigna, has covered it so it's inexpensive and readily available for me to use. The problem is, is especially if I'm running a hard race, I'm going to have to use that rescue inhaler also. So let's go back to this a little bit. I would take this in the morning. It'd be okay, but if it's really humid, I'm working really hard, personal trainer and, you know, as a runner, playing tennis, whatever it may be, it just wasn't quite enough. So if I have to also use this and use the rescue inhalers a few times a day, the rescue inhalers completely screw up my running because they up my heart rate and tear up my throat. So that's a problem. Actually, I don't want a big heart rate. I don't think any of us want an elevated heart rate for any reason. So that's a problem with using just the corticosteroid medication. So years ago, I used Blue Cross Insurance, and Blue Cross Insurance would cover a material called Simbaport. It's fantastic. It had those two medications, the steroid and the fast-acting medication, in one puff. I could do one puff in the morning, one puff again in the afternoon. would rarely have to use my rescue inhaler, and it was fantastic. And of course, after a few years, Blue Cross said, no more, and they did not longer cover it. And my cost was $515 a month. So then I would actually order from a Canadian pharmacy for about $187 a month. Then it went up to $350 a month. So and it was actually coming from India, ordered out of Canada, our healthcare system. So I back went back to the Wixella um, because I couldn't afford this one anymore. Um, I would keep um, some around because if I had something really important to do, give a talk somewhere, whatever it may be, then I would use that. But that was Simbacort, still is by far my favorite. So last year, I had a track meet in Dallas. It was hot, probably 90 degrees, 70% humidity. That's what we live in here. And I was running an 800 or a mile. I don't know which one it was that this happened on the track. And in the middle of the race, had a severe asthma attack. I was using Luxella and had not taken any puffs off my albuterol inhaler because I don't want to up my heart rate before I race. That's very dangerous. So at the end of the race, I'm coughing like a freak. There's no other way to put it. One of my friends was like, are you okay? Are you okay? And I go, no, I just need to get to my inhaler. I go to my truck. I'm almost throwing up and using my albuterol inhaler 10, 15 times, completely something you should never have to do or do because it's not safe because your heart rate will go up to 150 so that I could breathe again couple of things. One of them would be unsafe. The other one being it was scary as could be and doesn't work for me. So at that point, I called up my new doctor here in Fort Worth, Texas, great guy, and said, hey, I got a problem. And he said, we've got a great new thing for you to try. And it's called Res Tree. And I went, fantastic. Got a couple of samples. It has all three different chemicals in there. So it has a steroid in there, has the short acting one, and has a third one that really clears out all the mucus of your lungs. This was a game changer. 
I, I'd never been so happy on a drug in my life. Two pops in the morning and I was great. But then we found out the truth. Cigna refused to cover it. And in the beginning, my pharmacy wouldn't even bill it. They didn't care if I was going to pay cash or anything. The company, AstraZeneca, had sent out these cards and said, we'll get reduced the rate if your insurance won't cover it. So without insurance, it was $717 for a one-month supply. With the card from the AstraZeneca company, it was $597. Still price prohibitive. It wasn't going to work for me. And I kept fighting with the insurance because nothing else that they covered worked. I started this fight last November, which makes it seven months ago. At that point, we kept arguing with the insurance back and forth, and then they eventually sent me a letter. So Sigma sends me a letter. And what this letter says is, we're not going to cover the breast tree, even though it works better for you, unless you try other medications first. Now, this letter came in May. So it took six months to get to this point. And I mean, my doctor arguing on the phone, I was arguing on the phone, uh, just over and over again. And now Cigna is telling me two other medications I need to take before they would okay the breast tree. Now, the fascinating things about these two medications is that one of them is for COPD. It's never required for asthma, but they were telling me to take them. So I agreed to try these other two medications first. So my doctor puts in these two medications. They are called Anora and Arnuity, and they are actually a puff powder and not an inhalation spray like I'd used before. And then, of course, they're denied again by the insurance company, and I'd have to pay full cash price. So that didn't make sense if I was going to have to pay full cash price for the one that works anyway. I call the insurance company asking, why did you recommend on your letter two drugs that still you don't cover? They agree on the phone now to cover half the price of these drugs. So when I go to get these drugs, right, that have all three medications that work amazing together, the annuity, which is a steroid, is $95 my price. That is actually half of what it would be cash price. And the Anora, which is one just for COPD, one that my doctor said he would never prescribe, that's being prescribed by my what? insurance company, was 161 So for $170, I could get these two drugs. And I said, all right, I'll try them. So I got these two drugs. First thing to know about these two drugs, they're like a powder that puffs into your mouth. The idea is that it's a bigger chemical piece that goes in and would last longer in your lungs. Unlike the breast tree, which is an aerosol that gets to work in, I don't know, a minute or two, these take almost 45 minutes when I take them in the morning. I can't just take them and go run. It doesn't work that way. So I've had to use these because this is what the insurance company said I had to use in order to use the breast tree. And I hate them. I hate them. It takes me 45 minutes, and I don't even know what's going on for that 45 minutes. So what happens then? I'm back to using the rescue inhaler, the albuterol, to get my morning run in if I'm wheezing in the morning from nighttime. I usually do not take any drugs to sleep at night. That's not my problem. It's only when I'm doing exercise, especially, or working with a personal trainer. So that's what happened. So where I sit now, I'm going to have my doctor put the breast tree back in and say, hey, those other two ones you tried me, made me try. They didn't really work. So can you make the breast tree okay? So what they told me on the phone, but when you deal with an insurance company, what they say on the phone and what they do are two different things is they will cover half the cost of the breast tree. Breast tree is $717, so it's $355 that they will cover, and I will have to pay the rest. $350, bucks more or less, I will have to pay to get my asthma taken care of. A few things I want you to realize here is that we are not getting the medications that our doctors are prescribing. We are getting medications okayed by insurance. It has nothing to do. These are not insurance. The insurance people who make these decisions are not doctors or even nurses. I actually question them on that. You are recommending a drug that my doctor would not even recommend. So this is the situation. This is where we are. But let me tell you the history. Breast tree works so well. You don't need my albuterol inhaler. And I can run very successfully without using it. Heart rate doesn't get elevated. 
works a little bit less hours than I would prefer. It actually wears off at about eight hours, but I can deal with that and take a second puff if I need to for the afternoon. But this is where we are in our American healthcare system, where our medicines are, you know, picked by an insurance company and not our doctor. So I hope this kind of showed you what was going on currently with the uh, American healthcare system and how to run with asthma. If you have asthma, if you have breathing issues, really try to find a great doctor who's willing to work with you to try to get through your insurance issues. And don't just take something and rely on albuterol. It's bad for your heart. Any questions about this? I am happy to tell you all about it. Next couple of minutes, I'll show you with the exact labels and what they look for. Thanks for listening. And really, anything I can help you with with your asthma and how to run with it, let me know.